which is your toolbar. Now you can change the appearance of your toolbar. Um, right now mine's in a single column format, but if I go up here to this little double arrow button right above the toolbar and I click on it, it will expand into a two column. That's just personal preference. Again, historically it was always a two column toolbar and then they came up with a single column concept so that way you had more working space. That's all it really boils down to. Now, if you're not seeing the exact same list or um, all the tools that I'm seeing, partly that could be because of the workspace that you're currently in. Now, the default workspace is typically essentials, and you'll see that up in the top right-hand corner. Now, you'll notice if you click on that, you have a list of other workspaces that are available, and you'll notice there's actually two essentials. There's essentials, and then there's essentials classic. So the essentials is the newer version. And if you choose that option, you'll notice that you lose this data that appeared up here at the top of the screen. If you go to Essentials Classic, you get that data. So me personally, I prefer the Essentials Classic because it gives me access to this section up here at the top, which is my options bar. And it's kind of a shortcut to some of the other features that are available that I would find in other locations, okay? So you can use whatever preference you want. But the other thing that you'll notice is if you jump back and forth between those two workspaces is this environment over here on the right-hand side, which is our docking station, and that's where all our panels get stored, that also reconfigures as well. So when you're in Essentials, you have a lot less panels available versus if you're in Essentials Classic. In fact, in the Essentials Classic, you actually get three columns of that docking station instead of just one. You'll also notice there's some other standard workspaces, such as if you're gonna do a lot of printing and proofing work, if you choose that as an option, again, it's gonna reconfigure with different panels and tools that are specific to working in that environment. And these are custom built. Now, you have the ability to create your own, which is what we're gonna walk through here, so I'm gonna go back to the Essentials Classic. And then in this column right here, which I have a bunch of icons, um, these are panels that are just not expanded. Uh, if I click on that little tick mark, two arrows right at the top of that column, that will expand it. Okay, so now I can actually see the contents of those panels. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to the panel called Stroke, and I'm gonna click and drag to the left, so I'm dragging it away from the docking station. And now I've created what's called a floating panel, which just simply means that I can place my cursor at the top of that panel, hold and drag, and I can move it around my screen wherever I want to. And so the benefit of that sometimes is, depending on you know where your artwork is, you might just want to have the panel closer to the artwork because you're going to be jumping back and forth between it. If you have multiple floating panels, which you can, you can configure these differently as well because obviously as you start to get multiple floating panels, it can start to cover up the artwork space. So one thing that you can do is you can take a floating panel and you can drag it to the base of another when this blue horizontal line appears, when you release your mouse, they're now grouped together or stuck together. I can also take a floating panel and drop it on top of another floating panel so I get a blue border. When I see the blue border and release my mouse, it's now in the same floating panel. And I can access the different panels by simply clicking on the tabs up at the top. So I want you to create at least one floating panel so that your workspace looks a little bit different. 